So uh, it's good to be back. And uh, I have to admit, I, I'm not used to doing this on a weekly basis since I was a head coach a few years ago. So you guys, I'm sure, will put me on the spot and uh, make sure I've got some good quality material for you today. Um, the, the good news is that uh, any weekend in college football is always uh, chock full of interesting observations. It's like a classic Seinfeld episode. There's, there's always uh, multiple storylines going on. And these first two weeks, you could certainly argue that uh, special teams has played a huge role, whether it be in our own game or so many other games. Uh, you guys were asking me some questions about Nebraska last week. And uh, obviously, uh, Florida State LSU had played a huge role in the game and, and a number of others across the country uh, so far this season. Uh, what I brought along with me uh, today that I thought you, you might find interesting um, is, is a copy of our depth chart. And um, so you can see there's dozens of names on here. There's all these different color codes. And they all mean different things. Um, and almost every guy. Um, that dressed for the game is on there in multiple uh, spots in some way, shape, or form. It might be just the hands team at the end of the game. Um, but on the flip side of this depth chart is what we call our game day eyes, okay? And that's an important part of, of what we do because every coach who's involved in special teams during the week also has – responsibilities on game day to be watching certain things on each play. And uh, I'll tell you a true story that, uh, that you might get a little chuckle out of. So going back to the 2020 season and COVID, um, we were all going through unknown times day to day. Um, this depth chart was changing daily based on uh, guys getting tested three times a week, uh, we didn't know who was going to play in the game, uh, what coaches might not be able to coach in the game. So going into that season, I decided to make a new column on the game day eyes, which I called emergency unit leader. And so if, if I got sick and was told that I couldn't coach in the game, then a coach was going to be ready to coach each of the special teams units. And we thought that that was a good fail safe uh, if I couldn't get on a plane on a Friday or something or somebody else couldn't and so forth. Um, so last week when we were getting ready to play Georgia State and I was going over the game day eyes with this staff, which obviously includes some new coaches, uh, I told them the backstory of the emergency unit leader and, um, and how I just decided to, to keep that going uh, since the 2020 season, and and I, I th this is this is not made up. I told them, I said, so if if I have a heart attack on Saturday night, or if I decide to drop the mic and walk out of Willie B after a big night, you guys know who's in charge, uh, coach your unit, and 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 off we go. So I think there was probably an argument at different times in the game for either you know pulling a Fred Sanford and and uh, being ready to have a heart attack or, uh, or saying this, is, this night's going pretty well, this might be a, uh, might be a high note kind of day. But, uh, but that's coaching in a nutshell. And um, been doing this for 30 years now, um, half of that as a head coach and, and half of that as an assistant coach. And so that's, you know, well, it's probably upwards of 350 games right now. And, um, you know, those three and a half hours are intense. And and you're constantly going. It's, it's mentally taxing. It's physically taxing. You're running up and down the sideline, running back and forth to the benches. Um, who's in the game? Who's out of the game? What changes need to be made? Uh, multiple adjustments going on. And, uh, and you're coaching right up till the very end because um, you, know, you might need to get the hands team out there. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody's kind of mentally shut it down and said, well, you know, this thing's under control, but they got to go out and play a play uh, with two minutes left in the game. So um, it, 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 it takes its toll on you. But what I really believe is that you, you coach hard and you give it everything you have or don't do it. And, um, you know, that's the great thing about working for Shane Beamer. That's how he approaches it. 
Um, the year I spent with Mike Norvell, I, I thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed working with Mike because he was very much the same way. It's like this, this game and these players and the people you work with, they deserve your very best. Um, and so you, none of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes, but you, you have to be at your best um, all the time. And um, along with that, you know, week to week, you just never know. And, and so last week played out well for us. Um, in, in certain ways on special teams, but no two games are alike. Um, Matchups are different every week. The weather is different every week. Injuries are different. Momentum's different. Luck is different. Um, so uh, I've been doing this long enough to know that you, you, you never get too high, you never get too low. Um, you coach hard, but you, you stay even keeled and um, you enjoy a win and then you, you get ready to move on because you realize that uh, that each game is its own entity and, uh, and there are no guarantees that what you did a week ago is, is going to dictate anything the following week. Um, you know, a little, a little history nugget for you. Uh, Eisenhower wrote a note and put it in his pocket uh, the, the night before D-Day. And basically, uh, the note said that, uh, you know, it was his responsibility and uh, the, the failure of the operation rested solely with him. And um, that's pretty humbling thought right there when when you think about the success of that operation and how it impacted history but you know I think that's that's really how how you have to a- approach coaching now that being said I did take note of the pair of boxer shorts I was wearing on Saturday night and I will make sure that those are packed for this trip so uh, and maybe the week after too so um, but with uh, with with that uh, said um, I'll open it up for whatever questions you have. Big challenge this week for sure. Pete, you said you remained even keeled, so you didn't come in Sunday and ask for maybe a raise or a better parking space. No, like sir. That. No, 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 sir. I, was, I mean, how did you talk to your kids? Obviously, it's a huge night, and, and you've probably been in it long enough to know that all these things will probably not happen again in one single game, but you want to keep the kids excited. How did you approach that yeah. the next day when you had them? Yeah, I, I thought in a lot of ways it was a great win because it was a humbling win. There was enough to walk away from to say, yes, we did some good things, but we can do so much more. And there was plenty, plenty to coach on, plenty to improve upon. Um, it, it was by no means a, a, a perfect night in any way, shape, or form. And, and the other part is that it's about complementary football. So I give a lot of credit to the defense because they were able to get some stops and allow our punt pressure unit to go out there on the field and, and make some plays in that game that were game-changing plays. If, if they're driving and they're getting into positive territory and four-down territory and all that, then we're not getting an opportunity to go out there and make those plays. So I think a good team plays complementary football There are going to be weeks where we don't generate explosive plays on special teams, but hopefully do enough to 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 not hurt us, to not be on the negative side. And maybe uh, another phase really steps up and has an exceptional day. Um, But when when all three phases are contributing and 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 um, uh, different games are going to play out in different ways. But but ideally, that's what you want. Pete, have you gotten a chance to talk to Coach Norvell after that game? We texted back and forth. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, when I got home late that night and turned it on towards the end uh, and Jen and I were sitting there, um, you know, we know how important special teams is to Mike. Uh, and so there was no question in my mind that those guys were going to be ready. And if who they were playing uh, was going to give them uh, an opportunity to make plays in that phase, uh, they would. Um, and, and a lot of it sometimes is just by doing the right things. It's not by doing anything exceptional other than playing with effort and sometimes letting the opponent screw it up, right? And, um, and so um, I was not surprised to, to, to see Florida State being ready to make some of those plays, just knowing that the amount of time, effort, energy that, that they put into special teams is very similar to what we do here. I guess Coach Beamer was talking yesterday about having a good punt block, punt pressure unit helps the return game as well in terms of complementary football. How can 
a good return game because you're so good at blocking punts help set the offense up for success with better field position or, or a little bit more momentum? Sure. Well, that was uh, something that, that probably didn't get the credit it deserved the other night from a special team standpoint was that uh, we had one pretty good long return that was close to going and a couple others where we gained some decent yards. Um, and when, when you bring a lot of pressure, uh, people are going to be very conscientious about blocking you. And when they're blocking you, they're not covering down the field, at least not yet. And that's going to create some more space for the return game. So even within the unit itself, it provides good complementary football. And yes, if you can gain 10 yards on a return, uh, that might not seem like a big deal, but that might change completely the offensive coordinator's mindset because of where that drive is starting in terms of, uh, of what types of plays that he can run. So everything matters. Uh, that, that's one thing I've, I've learned doing this a long time, that, that everything matters. And I'm sure there are times, uh, whether it be our assistant coaches or our players, probably look at me and say that I'm you know, off the charts, anal about some stuff. But there's a reason because, you know, you don't get reps back and you don't get time back. And, and every second that you have is an opportunity to get better. Um, so and, and that stuff definitely pays off on, on Saturday afternoons and Saturday nights. Okay, good. Um, Shane told us that the fake field goal that you guys started off with was pre-planned before you guys ever got on the field. Can you take us through just kind of the thought process going into that and then also what that moment was like on the sideline watching the call play out sure well uh he's absolutely right that that um you know we talk about things a lot going into saturday um he obviously has to feel good about um those high risk type of plays and and when to call them and if to call them um the great thing is that we know, uh, you know, that he grew up around his dad and also has a special teams background himself. So he has an appreciation for those things. And I'd like to think that I've earned his trust that when I present something that an opportunity may be there for us, that he knows it's well thought out and, um, and, and not just uh, something that, that I dreamed up in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep. Um, so we went into that game feeling pretty good that 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 opportunity might be there and um, that we wanted to get it called. And uh, to his credit, um, he had um, wrapped his, his arms around the idea that, that, uh, that we could do it um, if and when it presented itself. So um, I was glad we called it. I was proud of Hunter Rogers and how he executed it. And some little things, you know, we work ball security with our specialists, believe it or not. And, and if you saw Hunter lower his pads and, and tuck the ball and keep it high and tight, and um, that was their starting inside linebacker that tackled him. And if he runs through there with high pads and, and gets knocked back, uh, it's first and 10 Georgia State. But the fact that, that he, you know, he hit the afterburners and, and, and ran behind his pads and accelerated his, his feet and, and got his pads down and, and delivered a blow to that linebacker, that's what got us that first down and, and eventually that first score. So, again, it's, it, it's, it's a game of, of detail and fundamentals and techniques, and those things apply to every guy on the roster. With with Kai, um, did you actually anticipate him, especially when the injury happened, being able to recover quickly enough to to be able to punt uh, the other night? And how how does he go from where he was with that foot injury to to being able to punt as well as he did, as quick as he did? So anytime there's an injury, um, I think that's where relationships with your players are important because. Everybody is going to going to handle themselves a little bit differently emotionally and mentally as as much as physically. Somebody might go through the exact same rehab for the exact same injury, and one guy might be ready two weeks earlier than somebody else. Some of it has to do with what position you play and what the demands of that position are, but some of it definitely has to do with with the guy and and how you handle all of that um, emotionally. 
Kai is a very even keeled guy. I mean, he is just a regular guy. He's an athlete. He's a specialist, but he's not a specialist. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, uh, you, you know, you, you want to meet up with at, at uh, you know, some restaurant and, and, and have, have an adult beverage with 10 years from now and tell stories. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the kind of guy he is. So when this all happened, in my mind, I knew I wasn't going to have to push him because he's really, really, really uh, self-motivated. He's had the two summers we've been here. You asked Luke Day and his staff, and Kai Kroger's effort in the summer – and his productivity in the summer and, and the amount of, of things he did well in the summers training with our team is in the top 2 3% of our team both summers. So when, when he had this injury, I knew he was going to take care of business. And then it was just going to be a question of would he be ready. And I give a lot of credit to our other guys, to Alex and, and William and you know, they, they all had themselves ready to play in this game if he couldn't go. And then when we decided he was going to play, they were great team players. And there was no him and and Hahn that, well, I've done this all preseason and now, you know, Kai's back the, the week of the game and you're putting him back in there. Those guys understand their role as well. So, um, t- but to say that he was going to go out and have the kind of night he had, um, it, it was impressive. And, uh, and I'll admit, I was giving him a little hard time after the first two punts. Uh, I was giving him a hard time on the sideline that he was a little bit rusty and, and so forth. And, and then he turned around and, and uh, obviously had a, had a huge second half of the game. Um, Mitch Jeter told us after the game Saturday that he, you told him he won the job starting kicker on Friday. I guess how did that conversation kind of go? And what's it like as a special teams coach watching a true freshman hit 250-plus yarders in his first game? Well, I, I consider Mitch to be, I guess, a junior. Um, and I know it's all con- confusing now with the extra year of eligibility, but you're right. He's a first year kicker in terms of he's been the kickoff guy, but he hasn't kicked field goals in games. So there was definitely some, all right, this is, this is your shot and, and, and go do it. And he, he responded in a big way. No, but our, our guys um, were very good about understanding two things. One is that competition's ongoing and um, you know there really wasn't a need to make some big announcement um, a week or two weeks ahead of the first game who the kicker was going to be it's not like a center working with the guards and the tackles on the offensive line where you know if you had a different kicker it's it's going to affect calls and things like that so there really wasn't a rush to do that from from my standpoint um, and, and the second thing is that, um, you know, in our room, we have a lot of very candid, open conversations about things. Who's going on what day? Who's taking what reps? Why? This guy's doing well. This guy's got to step it up. So I think that kind of honesty and candor, it, you know, is appreciated by the guys. And then they also understood that we didn't want to tell the world who our kicker was going to be until uh, we had to. Um, going into the game. And, and so a little bit of intrigue going into the first game is not a bad thing. And um, I think it played out very well. And I give Mitch a lot of credit for stepping up and, and banging two long kicks when we really needed them. So kind of off of that, obviously, special teams got a lot of praise last game. Um, do you feel, in a sense, not in your own way, but uh, our fans, have they created kind of a higher standard going into this upcoming game? Like, do you believe there's a little bit more pressure just because everybody Gamecocks fans have basically just, you know, lifted them up spirits-wise? Do you think yeah. they're going to go into it with a high expectation? Um, no is not the answer you want to hear, but that's the answer I'm going to give you, and here's why. First of all, nobody, nobody puts as much pressure on themselves to do a good job as I do. I tell the guys all the time, my job is to worry. Your job is to go play, all right? My job's to prepare you and worry about the what ifs. Your job is to go make full speed decisions with great effort and the technique that we've taught you uh, and apply it on game day and everything will be just fine. Um, I love the fact that we are, are building something here and that everybody involved in our program, because I believe very much like Shane, that this is a very inclusive, not exclusive program. We want everybody who 
wants to be a part of this thing to feel like they're a part of this thing. So we obviously have a head coach who's very easy to get to know and very approachable. And I'd like to think I'm very much the same way. And so if, if we are building something here that uh, is taking on a life of its own, um, like Coach Beamer did at Virginia Tech for all those years, then that's awesome. And that makes it all that much more exciting for me to come to work every day, for our staff to be involved with this. And not that I have a lot of time to read a lot of quotes from our players, but our players are starting to really get excited about this stuff. When you have freshmen coming in and they're talking about it and you have fifth year seniors who may not even be on it who are talking about it, it's starting to, to take root, right? And that's what we want. So that doesn't mean that there's not going to be bad moments. That doesn't mean that there are still not going to be highs and lows. Certainly, every week is not going to be like last week. But we are adding value to the program. And, and that's what we want to be doing. Pete, do you anticipate Kai returning as holder this week? Well, uh, we'll, we'll see where he's at. You know, I, I don't want to push things along. I don't want to get greedy. We know he's an exceptional holder, um, but he's he's not 100% yet. So we'll we'll just have to take that day by day and see where that plays out to. Also, I guess one of the popular lines is like, well, you know, Arkansas will, will be ready for any fake, fake plays on special teams. But can you really be ready considering how many different things that you guys can do? Would it ever influence your way of thinking knowing that uh, you guys had such a successful week and say, well, does not matter if they're ready or not? You know, they're very – well coached on special teams. They play with a tremendous amount of effort. Uh, I think I've told you guys before, I certainly share with our team all the time, watch the last PAT field goal of a game and how hard their PAT field goal block unit goes, and that'll tell you a lot about a football team. Watch the last kickoff of a game, uh, maybe when they're up 28 points and how hard the guys are covering. That'll tell you a lot about a football team. And I will tell you this, this is a tough, rugged, hardworking, high-effort football team that we're playing, and they've got excellent coaches. Um, so they will be well-prepared, and, um, you know, there's, there's risk-reward to everything you do. And um, I know we were talking about that um, last week uh, following the, the, the Week Zero games uh, and, and some of the things that played out on special teams. So uh, every, every play is its own entity, every week is its own entity, and uh, you, you never quite know what the future might hold. You made mention of it earlier, and Shane mentioned it a couple of times as well, that you know special teams was far from perfect, and that there was a lot to clean up. Can you give us maybe a couple of examples for, for us folks who – aren't necessarily able to pick those things out. Sure. Well, the, the most obvious one was the bad snap on the extra point. And um, Matt's uh, an experienced player, um, a veteran player. And, uh, and so along with that come high expectations for consistency and so forth. Um, so we need to get that cleaned up for sure. And, and uh, you know, we talked about Hunter Rogers on the fake field goal. I was, I was proud of him and how he stepped in there and, and uh, snapped the remainder of that game, and, and, and that was good to see. Um, there are a lot of other, you know, little technique things. Um, one thing I tell our guys is, um, you know, games play out different ways. And so being able to, to take a technique and perhaps apply it in a different way over the course of the game uh, based on uh, an adjustment that we need to make, you know, there's an art to that. There's, you almost have to, you know, erase some things that maybe you've been told uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and now hit the reset button and say, okay, but he wants me to do this this way if this situation occurs again. And, and there's, a, there's an art to that. There's a, an experience that comes with that. Um, the, the game has to slow down for you, uh, for guys to be able to apply that. And, and so, um, you know, I told them on Sunday, we have to embrace chaos because sometimes the sideline can be chaos. And, uh, and you know, again, getting back to what I said earlier, that, that we're going to be going hard for three and a half hours, and, and we're going to be looking for you and, and telling you something in 15 seconds, and, 
and then expecting you to be able to, to go out there and, and apply it so that it can make a difference in the game. All right, Coach. Appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks, everybody.